Hey everyone, this is Brad from DevOps Journey, and in this video we are going to go over Docker container networks. So by default, Docker will just bridge containers to the host network, but you have the option to create networks within Docker and attach containers to those networks. So let's have a look at the Docker network command. So we'll type Docker network to get a list of commands, and we can see our different options here. So um, create is how we would create a network, connect is how we would connect a container to that network, and ls would show all our current networks. So if we just do a docker network ls right now, we can see that these are the default networks. Um, you got the host only and then the bridge. Um, bridge is what will be used by default by your containers. When we did docker inspect before, uh, in our previous video, you probably saw that the network that was attached was the bridge network. So that's what it will choose by default if you don't choose a network to connect it to. So let's get started and let's create our own custom network here. So we'll do that with the docker network command and we'll use the create option and all we need to do is create a name for our network. So let's create one called front end. And I'm going to redo that command. But the second one we create is going to be back end. So good. Now we have two Docker networks created here. And if we list that out, we can see that there's a back end network and the front end network. And just to give everyone a better idea of what we're trying to accomplish here. Um, this is an example of what Docker networks might look like. So we have the Docker server at the bottom and the Docker server would host both of the networks. So it would have the back end network and the front end network and then you would attach ca containers to that network. So we have a back end network here and the front end and the back end would be something like the database excuse my uh, drawing here but we might have like the database attached to just the back end we'd have an app server that has a leg in the back end and a leg in the front end network and then maybe a web server a front end proxy or something like that that just has access to the front end network and this is sort of how the security of networking usually works. You compartmentalize everything and give them minimum access to what they need. Usually the front end is where your users are going to come in and that server only needs to talk to the application server and then the application server usually needs a leg in both networks as it's doing database calls and doing something and then presenting it to the web server. So this is a pretty typical setup. Um, we're, we're gonna focus on, we'll set up the DB and we'll do a web server and give it a leg in both of these networks, a back end and a front end. And then we'll put the DB just in the back end. So we got both our networks created here already. We got our front end and back end network. Let's have a closer look at this using the docker network inspect command. So we'll use docker network inspect and let's have a look at our front end and you can see that JSON format is back just like the we always get with the inspect command and it gives us all the information we need to know about it we got the the friendly name here we got an ID um, it's the, using the bridge driver so different networks can have different uh, drivers attached to it bridged is usually the one you will use if you want it to uh, bridge to other networks uh, if you do something like host, it's sort of stuck within the host. There's also a few other options, but bridged is usually what you want to go with. Um, and then we got the IP subnet here. So it's using a slash 16, and this is the range. The default gateway, so this is the Docker server IP address. So if the host needs to reach outside of the network, it's going to send the traffic to here and I believe that's an IP address on this server if I do IP adder and 
I grep for that IP, I can see, yeah, it's it's uh, IP address on the Docker server here. This one over here. And this is what the adapter looks like on, on the Docker server. All right, so that's all we really need to do for the inspect command. Let's have a look at how we actually connect a container to these. So if we already have our containers running, then we'll use the docker connect command. So we got our two containers running and let me pull this over. So we got web01 and db1. So let's start connecting these two containers. So we'll do a docker network connect and we'll go front end and we'll say web01 and now let's also connect web01 to the back end. Now let's do docker network ls. We can see that we have the same output here, but if we do a docker network inspect front end, make sure to spell it properly, we should see the containers that are attached to this network. Yes, we can see that this container, Web01, is attached to the network. Perfect. And if we do the same to backends, we get that. Let's run Docker Connect backend and also put our DB in there. I actually have it named as DB1. Okay, so inspect backend again. All right, we can see both containers there now. So we got containers web01 and db1. Perfect. So that's how you connect currently running containers to uh, a network. Let's go ahead and test to make sure that these containers can actually communicate with each other. So the best way to test if two things can communicate is with uh, ping utility. So let's see if uh, we can ping. So we'll do docker exec to run a command and we will give the container name of web01 and we're gonna say ping db1 and then we're getting the error ping executable is not found so by default our Ubuntu image does not have the ping utility installed on it so let's go ahead and take out that ping db1 and do an apt get install and I think it's IP utils dash ping let's update let's do update yes and then app get install ping Let's see if this runs it. If you want the command that I use to install the ping command, it's right here. So let's have a look at it. It's docker exec web01 app get update dash y and then and 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 then I'm just running the command again. Docker exec web01 app get install ip utils dash ping. So perfect. That's how you would install it. Now when you ping, the ping works. So we know Web01 can ping DB1, and that also shows that name resolution is working. And um, you can see that it's communicating on this network, the 172.19.0 network. And I can communicate there from this Docker host too. So if I do ping, don't 172.19.0.3 the ping goes through and if I wanted to further test this I could do docker exec and uh, let's go db01 and let's say use the curl command and I could go web01 
and I can see that curl is not installed. So if I want to install curl, I would do docker exec db1 um, app get install curl. And you need to do the dash y so it accepts any input that's required. And now if we run that docker curl command, you can see, wow, it got the website. So there's communication between the DB and Webl1. All right, so the last thing I'm going to show is how we can uh, start a new container. And when we start that new con container, we want it to attach to a network. So it's very similar to what we've done before. So it's just the docker run command and the usual parameters. But this one, I gave the dash dash network and said front end. And the name I gave this one was just proxy one, as this could be seen as the proxy server. So if I do docker ps, I can see that where proxy one is up. And if I do a docker network, inspect front end. I can see that the containers are web01 and proxy1 and if I want to do docker inspect proxy1 I could see that um, in the network settings under networks it's attached to front end. So that's all I think uh, everyone really needs to know in regards to Docker network. The knowledge I gave in this video should cover most of the networking needs for your containers. If you found the video helpful, please hit the like button. If you would like to see more content from me, please hit subscribe. Otherwise, please join me in the next video where we're going to go over Docker files.